Hello, assalamualaikum. Welcome to my channel again. I hope you all are in good health and in the best state. Um, today I'm just going to be talking about um, performing solar while at work, while going about your top power shoes. Like duties and all the stuff. I'm not really going to go into into it because I can understand that the um um different specialties, different words, different spaces are different. So I'm just going to give some keys that I believe will be helpful, inshallah, to help you navigate through your um day-to-day -day activities and be able to plan your solar appropriately. So without much further ado, let's go straight into the video. <laughs> Till the day I'm gone, I go follow, follow you. Till the day I'm gone, follow, follow. Oh, as I have rightly introduced earlier, we're going to be talking about um, solar at work, and I'm just going to mention seven tips, as the title of this video might have rightly suggested, on how to navigate performing solar while at work. And the number one tip I want to give is intention. As Muslims, we need to know that, we need to understand that intention is the main, main goal or is the, is the root of everything we're doing. Yeah, let me just that. Intention is the root of everything we're doing. As a Muslim, you, you, you have to have good, pure intentions towards what everything you want to do. So the first thing is you have to have that intention that, oh Allah, I'm going to work, it's going to be a 12-hour shift. And I would love to perform my solar, no matter how many of them I have to within this 12 hour space, you know. So, and then you have to pray about your intention as well. Bring it to the front of Allah after your solar, you know, and say and ask for his help, for his aid to help you in, in manifesting this, um, these goals. And inshallah, it's going to be um, very easy for you afterwards. So, um, and um, we all know the common adage of the Prophet Sallallahu that say, uh, that we all know that it is very important to have good intentions, to, to actually make the intentions towards the deeds that we want to do so we can also maximize our reward while doing it. And then, um, Another thing is it is very important to find a prayer room or a prayer space. Well, with my um, a little bit of research, I wouldn't call it research because there's no much data to back it up. But, you know, I've had conversation with friends here and there and everywhere. And um, most of the trusts have a quiet room. They have a quiet room. Now, sometimes we mistake the quiet room for the... Um, uh, um, multi faith room sometimes there's a multi faith room where you could see the bell and the bible at one point and the multi faith room usually has chairs and stuff and and then aside this multi faith room there is usually another room called a quiet room which is basically designed for the muslims where it is just the rug down there you have um, space to pray and all some of the trust have um, supply of jilbabs and things that would make your solar very easy personally my trust out of the five hospitals we have i have been to um four and alhamdulillah the four that i've been to they have they, they all have a prayer room with three of them having um the ablution um center attached to it although usually the ablution um sink is just like one so you have to like wait for each other and usually there's no traffic anyway so three of them have like ablution center attached to it and then one of them does not have you have to do your ablution in other toilets and stuff before you go to the um to the quiet room so usually so with my you know my <laughs> my amateur set of data there is usually like a, a quiet room in each trust so if you've made your intention locate the quiet room in your trust and then determine how far or how close it is to your department to your ward how long it takes you to walk there you know how many minutes you 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 probably need to walk down to the prayer room back to your ward and to actually do your solar so that's going to give you a rough idea of how long each solar is actually going to be 
I'm taking you. So, um, sometimes some of the trust doesn't have. I'm going to get there and discuss more about that, inshallah. If your trust does not have a prayer room or a quiet room, you've asked around, no prayer room, no quiet room, no multi-faith room, you can as well, you know, cut out a space for yourself. And um, if you're on the ward or if you're in any department, there are probably some, maybe some rooms you they are not using or some rooms that quite quiet quite decent and neat you know that you can actually really use so what you can do is um have like a mobile praying mat you know that with the mobile praying mat i'm going into the top into the third tip already so the third tip is like having a mobile praying mat so if you have a mobile praying mat in a, it enables you to be able to pray anywhere that is kind of more closer to your workplace that is more decent and especially if you don't have a, a proper prayer room in your in your trust you know so with the mobile prayer mat you can always like it's easy for you to do that i have one as well but i've not had any cost to use it because thankfully in my trust we have a quiet room so i always go to the quiet room anyway so the mobile prayer mat does not cost much i think i bought mine for two pounds fifty on ebay i'm not very sure if you just search mobile prayer mat on ebay you should be able to to, to get one for much less than five pounds really and it is very easy to carry it is lightweight it can also show you the direction of the kibla as well so just you know have the intention and work towards it that's that's what the first three points have been about yeah so and then um the fourth tip we're going to be discussing is being in wudu most of the time it is very 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 important to do this because of course i've noticed we have we have like very limited time you know to do a lot of things and sometimes you're at work you've even forgotten you've not you've not emptied your bladder you know all those times but then if you if, even if you hold your urine for a very long time it gets to a point where you think okay now I, I can't hold it any longer i need to pass urine so when you actually go and pass urine make sure take a little bit of time to 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 renew your ablution you know to renew your ablution and um, that way when you eventually have the opportunity to take time for solar you don't have to worry about the time you go to, for ablution you just you know carry on your ablution if if of course you have not done anything that that um, invalidates ablution and then you can just go and pray instead of worrying about the time to do ablution another tip for the ablution thing is well usually here most of us wear socks anyway either it is voluntary or involuntary when you wear your shoe you wear socks and because of the weather most of the time you have to wear socks so best is do your ablution from home and then wear your socks so when you are renewing your ablutions when you do anything that invalidates your ablution you're just going to wipe over your socks and not putting your leg in the sink and then you know the awkward ablution in public moment <laughs> so that's that's another very great tip do your ablution from home wear your socks and then you can always wipe over the socks until um you get back home to um you know until the day runs out anyway so um that's that about that always always try as much as possible to be in a state of uh, ablution in a state of wudu and that that's going to make it easy for you to to take time out you know to just go and pray five minutes and then go back to your duty post um the number five point is um cleaning and 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 the number five point is cleaning properly after using the loo now this is this is a very very important point because you know as muslims when you go to the loo either you've done the major thing or the minor thing you have to wash properly down there with water and then that is when you can do ablution and then pray now what is most common here is toilet paper 
what is most common here is toilet paper what you see in most places is toilet paper there's no way you would see bella and bucket or bella with the top and then you'll be able to wash your bum it's, it's like very very scarce i have seen before i know yeah it was it was an asian event hall we went for a wedding with an aunt it was an asian event hall and attached um the toilet attached to the hall had this um proper those plastic kettles that we use for ablution in nigeria they have them so you could easily use it to wash down there um but here majority of the of the to of the public toilet in the hospitals everywhere they all have tissue paper now these are the tips you can use to ensure you are pro properly properly washed what you can do is have a toilet container that is situated for work now for some of us we have our um, locker room attached to the toilet so you can always have this container that you refill kept in your locker and whenever you need to go to the loo you just take it out from your locker and then take it to the loo that way you are able to you know clean appropriately and then you are able to renew your ablution if this is not possible another trick that is possible is using um the toilet paper that is provided now most times the, the toilets will have the toilet paper and the wash and basin so using the toilet paper that is provided and then soak it is in a reasonable amount of water and then using it to clean now for females especially don't forget always dab with tissue paper after cleaning with water to reduce risk for infection and all of that but those are the things that i know might be helpful you know in in ensuring we're properly clean because a lot of people are like i've gone to the toilet i'm not properly cleaned i can't do ablution and then i can't pray so you have to you know watch out for yourself find ways around being properly cleaned and that way then you can do ablution and then you can perform your solar at the appropriate time then the sixth point i don't know if i've missed the counting anyway the sixth point is be open and hungry for opportunity now when i say be open and hungry for opportunity i'm just going to recount my conversation with a colleague that is in um I don't want to mention places now well he's a main colleague anyway so uh he we were just talking on the phone asking questions about this immigration stuff and all and then he said he used to use the changing room in at work to pray when it's time for so i just asked for the permission from the meeting around to pray he prays and then um even when other colleagues works on him they just like apologize and then give him the 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 break to to do whatever he's doing and at a point his manager asked him if he wanted them to arrange a quiet room for him but well out of being humble and not trying to disturb he just said no don't worry but my point here is if you get asked that kind of question for those who doesn't have an existing choir room in their workplace don't ever say no don't think you're going to be the only one there are a lot of other people in your situation who so doesn't even have the courage to pray in their changing room but if they have a quiet room they would appreciate the fact and they will be able to go into the choir room and um pray so some of this a lot they they um so this the system here is very open it's very very open to a large extent you know because they pride themselves in saying the nhs is multi-dynamic multicultural and everything so you have to grab those opportunity by the truth i'm going to give a sample of my own trust like we have a quiet room and aside the quiet room we have like a larger space where we do juma every friday you know so before before those things can be put in place apparently the trust didn't just think about it somebody requested for it or somebody was asked and apparently he didn't say no and then the arrangement was made and that came to fruition and a lot of people in fact the person who, who probably made the request or 
whose um, effort was put into achieving this is probably not in the trust again but a lot of people coming after are praying they are able to pray get comfortable in the quiet room and each solar that is prayed in that quiet room and in the bigger uh, room meant for Juma the person is going to be getting some reward as well so just think about that so if you if you get the opportunity to talk to someone about providing a quiet room or if you get asked if you need a quiet room you know don't ever say no because that this it could be opening opportunity wide opportunity for a lot of people out there and um, the last but not the least tip is you should try as much as possible to find a prayer body you know if if you have all muslims within your workplace that your gender you know as muslims you try as much as possible to make things within our gender that your gender you know just like layers with them okay when it's time for salah i think you should give me a ring or if you're going to pass through my workplace like call me you know that kind of thing make friends that a work that basically what you did together is like pray and stuff there's a yemeni man here that i used to see he prays like i hardly see him pray alone always with some guys i think they are yemenis as well so they always pray in jama like always almost always pray in jama so that kind of thing if you, if you have a friend some you can talk to some you can introduce the prayer room the quiet room so and say okay i'm going to be taking you along and stuff so now i'm just going to finish that it is very important for us to recognize that for everything we're doing as muslims ibadah comes first our worship our our, our act of worship is what allah is going to ask first on the day of of, of, of accountability and as muslims you cannot just live the life as it comes worship has to be at the center of it worship has to be at the center of it and the only thing that manifests faith and belief that is a physical manifestation of our worship is solar and that is what is incorporated in our day-to-day -day activities so you cannot take it with levity you have to find time you have to squeeze it in you have to make the intention the sacrifice and you have to do what is needed to 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 be able to achieve this now i need you to put in the comment section if you want me to talk about adapting these tips into my actual day-to-day -day, um activities at work i've been able to navigate um praying while at work and um with the changing solar time as well so if you want to hear my own personal side of the stories i need you to put it in the comment and i don't know maybe if i have up to 15 20 comments asking for my own personal side of the story i can i, I will be able to share that with you inshallah and this is going to have a part two so until then i hope you have a very nice um nice time watching this video thank you for coming if you like the video like share subscribe remember to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to watch the video and uh, don't forget to comment if you want to pass on this bye